and welcome to the Something Random Podcast, where sometimes we talk about movies, sometimes we talk about television, but we always talk about something random. I'm your host, Charles Joseph Kelly. And I'm your co-host, Michael C. Macbeth. This is Joel Adam Chavez. Merry Christmas. Merry cr- early Christmas. It's not Christmas yet, you son of a bitch. Hey, it's Christmas time. It is. Your tr- it you're is right. the month of December. It's like people celebrating their birthday for the entire month. Yeah, you know. that's weird. When people are like, oh, it's my birthday month. Yeah, who gives a f- Nobody gives a fuck. Let's, Especially let's be real people here. that have it really early in the month. And yeah. Then like, and it's it's like, on the 3rd, and then on the 28th, they're still going, it's my birthday month. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Eh. <laughs> I normally just, like, block those people out of my life. Well, happy holidays yeah, to everyone. Yeah, you guys, too. <laughs> yes, uh, it's, been a, it's been a minute since we recorded together. It's been a little bit. How are you guys doing? Very well, thank you. How yeah. are you? I'm I'm Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. I'm alive. I was sick all last week, kind of. Yeah, it was. I noticed your voice is a little more. It's a little baritone. It's a little bass, sultry bass voice. <laughs> Welcome to the Something Random podcast. That's not sexy. No. Let's do. Let's do it as little sexy as possible. Welcome to the Something Random podcast. <laughs> uh, so, uh, whoa, what, Aziz, I'm sorry. When did uh, you get here? Uh, oh no! Oh no! My fingies. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah. What have you guys been watching this week? Well, uh, you, you should go first, Joel, because... I should? Yeah. Oh, I, have a, I have a handful of things. Um, I'm only going to talk about a couple more. I did watch Split, finally. Ah, oh, it's so good! I really, oh, my really, gosh. I really liked it. It was uh, on sale at Target on Blu-ray, so I picked it up. Can James, we, can James we, McAvoy is amazing. Can we spoil it? Can we spoil it? Um, Have you guys seen Split? I, I don't no know. Split I don't know if we is. should. Because it's M. Night, and I don't know if we should. Watch Split. Yeah. It's really good. I'm looking at the other two people that are sitting in this room. It's wonderful. I would rather not ruin it for everyone. But there's a I sequel coming out yeah. to it <laughs> this next year. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was really good. I Usually when I watch a movie as late at night as I watched this one, I'll, I will get tired and sometimes fall asleep, but, you know, it happens. This one kept me up, like, kept me entertained enough that I didn't fall asleep. Right. So it was, it was awesome. like, I'm so tired of M. Night Shyamalan, mm-hmm. so I am not excited to watch any of his movies. <laughs> this one was so good. I but still it also, like it. The, the pretense of what it was, you know, from kind of makes sense why it was good. So, yeah. Um, I don't want to, yeah. No, no more spoilers. You got to watch it for You got to watch it. I'll, I'll just say, watch other M. Night movies. Before this, maybe. Yeah. Well, that is that a, that can be a clue. I mean, yeah. Because it was Ooh, very unexpected. It was very unexpected. It was very unexpected mm-hmm. for me. Anyway, I, I, I was like, ooh. So. I was sitting in the theater, and then uh, <laughs> when the thing happened, I was like, <laughs> and I made the loudest, squeakiest noise I've ever made, like a little fangirl squealing over their favorite K-pop star. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that was worth mentioning this week was um, last week's SNL with James Franco. Did either of you watch it? No. no. What? James Franco. Did One of do... the best episodes of, of this year. Well, right. this year is still short, but this past whole past year. Did they do, did they do stuff based off the room? Uh, he talked about it. Um, Probably in his monologue. He talked about it in a little bit in the monologue, and there was a, <laughs> there was a sketch with uh, one of the new people. I can't remember her name. Uh, I wanted to try and remember her name, but I mm-hmm. can't. Um, and she's really funny. She's doing a lot of writing, and it was a James. It was a Franco family reunion, and she was like a distant cousin that he hadn't seen in twenty years. And she goes, "Little Jamie, I heard you made a bad movie." <laughs> <laughs> she's like, he's like, no, no, it's a movie about a bad movie. And he, she's like, oh, well, do you still go swimming? And do you still eat candy? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's great. I've watched, right. it, I've watched it like three times. So it's pretty funny. All right. And the other one. Uh, just so we keep these going, you watched The Room earlier. You know, I did watch The Room. I, well, I haven't finished it. I started watching it. Okay. Um, but it's fresh in my mind because I was watching it right before I came over here. And it's the worst. Oh. It's I, so I, bad. I, I, uh, I disagree. I think it's ama- Oscar okay. worthy. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, th- I was talking with Michael about this, about how how is a movie bad when you get so much enjoyment out of it? It's a, I think it's a good movie. I really, truly think that I get so much enjoyment out of this movie. I've seen it so many times that it's it's a good movie. It's a good movie for me. 
It's the movie that I've watched more than any other movie ever. You know, mm. Um, mm. one of the comparisons that Honest Trailers made um, was they, they compared it to Springtime for Hitler <laughs> in in its being an accidental masterpiece. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I no, I don't agree with that, although I haven't finished it yet. So. Are you Are you enjoying it at least? No. Not at all? No. It's just it's terrible. awful. It's, it's horrible. You're not, you're not laughing at I, I'm going, what? Okay. Oh, my okay. God. Like, okay. I'm laughing because it's bad. And that's the whole point, yeah. Um, but I don't think it was the point when it was being made, which is unfortunate. No. But, mm-hmm. um, no, not at all. There's one part that I rewound several times that I want to talk about. Okay. And, again, I haven't finished it, but mm-hmm. it's when he goes in to buy flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. This yes. is how the dialogue went. Hello, how are you? Hi, can I help you? Yes, I would like a dozen roses, please. Oh, hi, John. I didn't know it was you. How much is it? $18. Here, keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my, my favorite, favorite customer. customer. As he's walking. <laughs> One, how could you mistake that guy for anybody else? Yeah. Two, if it's your favorite customer, you're going to recognize. And I mean, I, I remember it like three or four times because I was like, this can't be a real move. This can't be like they're actually trying. But they spent six million dollars to make this movie. Six million dollars. But yeah, well, did you see the other customer service bit? I'm not where sure. Where they were in the which... restaurant, and you watch two other groups of people make just their o- orders. Just before. order food before he walks up to the counter. I don't think I've gotten oh, that far it's yet. So good. I don't think I've gotten that it's far yet. It's hilarious. Oh. I, oh yeah. No, just the the dialogue being unrealistic. I think is probably one of the things that makes it the worst. It's like they tried to, yeah, they tried to make it realistic but failed miserably. Right. Yeah. Um the girl, I don't know her name. I don't know any of the actresses or actors name. But Lisa, we, yeah, she reminds me of uh Courtney Love. Uh-huh. Who I loathe, yeah, who yeah. I loathe. Yeah, I can see that. But um it, probably equally as good as an actress. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like all those uh all those things with the uh, like a rock or something and it says still a better actress than Bella in Twilight. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um I'm anxious to finish it, which I will and um <laughs> Are you actually anxious to uh, to finish it because it doesn't? Well, I'm sound anxious for like it to it. be over. How about that? Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Fair enough. Michael, there was a big movie that came out this weekend. And there is. And... You went to see Ferdinand <laughs> about the John Cena bull. Oh my gosh! I no, I am not going to pay money to, to see that. <laughs> oh really? John Cena as a bull? I mean, I'll 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 rent it for a dollar at Redbox, but <laughs> he goes. I will not. He goes into a business. And it's full of China, and he tries not to smash things because he's a bull. What happens? China shop. What happens? I don't know. Don't know. Don't spoil it. I <laughs> won't go see it. <laughs> but speaking of of not spoiling things, um, I I watched Star Wars: oh, The yes. Last Jedi. Yes. Did you watch it yet? I watched it this morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so I uh, I beat you to the punch. So uh, before we before we go too much further, the people in the room, are you guys okay if Michael and I talk thematic spoilers and not like actual spoilers that happen in the movie? I'm okay with that. If you're uh, if you're our audience and you are not, you may want to. Maya, are you are you okay with it? Okay. Yeah, you're down. <laughs> okay, cool. So what do you thematic think? Only. What thematic? Yeah. No actual plot. So if you if you consider, like myself, that thematic spoilers are spoilers, turn this off, watch the movie, come back, and we'll be here waiting for you. I'll be naked, and I'll say, hello. Well, and hopefully, Welcome hopefully, back. hopefully, if you're they're a true fan, they've seen it already. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, like it's already made like an insane amount of money. It's the second biggest movie opening of all time. So second to my dick, Ferdinand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah, Ferdinand, Ferdinand. Okay, Fer, Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Ferdinand made thirteen million dollars oh. opening weekend, like over across the entire world. Oof. Star Wars has made like almost two hundred something million dollars, like crazy amounts of money, and Fer, Ferdinand's in second place with a tenth of the funds. Yeah, oh, that's great. Gosh. So, Star it Wars. It really is in second place? It's in second oh place. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, like, you don't 
really open against Star Wars. Yeah. Let's be real here. That's yeah. not a movie that you want to... If you want to make some money, don't open against Star Wars. Open well, on Christmas weekend when everybody and their mother is at the theater. Exactly. And they don't want to sit in a crowded theater and watch Star Wars. Um, that said, a lot of the trailers that preceded Star Wars, I am also very anxious to watch. I... I saw the uh, the actual trailer, not the teaser for Ready Player One, and I'm excited about it now. Okay, um, it does look a little too much like Fast and the Furious because they replaced spaceships with cars, apparently, and I imagine there's a racing element, but it I yeah. I can I can get past that. I think. Yeah. So uh, let's let's go back to Star Wars because <laughs> I've been saying let's talk Star Wars. What'd you think? What did you like it? Did you I not did. like it overall? I loved it. Actually, more than The Force Awakens. A lot of people raved about The Force Awakens. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was... Uh, it wasn't life-changing for me, personally. No, I mean, like, we've we've talked about this before, about how Force Awakens is kind of a new hope done rebooted. It's the same yeah. story. I mean, like, verbatim, they find a droid, right? And they find a droid who has a secret message. They have yeah. to go um, on a to nothing desert planet. Where they meet a Princess Leia on a on a thing, and it's just like, all right, this is the same yeah. movie. I think the coolest thing about The Force Awakens for me was seeing those actors. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's um, the same thing with Last Jedi, and they, like, amp it up to the next level, yeah. too. Seeing those original actors reprise their roles. Mark and, Hamill, and... so choice. Oh, my he gosh. Is, he needs to actually do more in film. That that was... He's brilliant. Incredible. Yeah. He's he's a great actor, and I love him, and I... yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I loved him before I even realized I loved him because of the Batman animated series. Um, right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, th- thematically, I I loved their use of color, first of all. Oh, like, my gosh. Um, they, they end up having a battle on this planet that's all covered in salt deposits. Right, but then also covered on top of that with snow. So it's this beautiful, like, white and red color scheme where they're, like, drifting mm-hmm. across things, and, like, this beautiful red is, like, trailing behind them. So gorgeous. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really cool. I appreciate you saying that because I always notice color because I'm a, I'm a visual person and I you know that's how I work. And nobody ever says that, you'll, so I appreciate that. You'll love this I movie. Can't, that makes me excited even more to see good, it Good, good. Yeah, the cinematographer who, who did this film, who was in charge of that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. is, it's brilliant cinematography. Okay. It's gorgeous. I mean, well, well, the first one was, uh, Force Awakens was the same way, so. He, and he, this person did that one, too? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to look that up while, while you guys are doing that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, second thing, yeah, we talked about, you know, The Force Awakens being a new, new hope, and... Uh, <laughs> You got your new hope, your new new hope, the newest hope, <laughs> the newest hope. Um, yeah, but but this one picture everything that you expect from original George Lucas Star Wars films, and just throw it out the window, because they 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 follow these these tropes occasionally. Sometimes somebody will have a line where I'm like, oh my gosh, we've already been there, you know? And then they go a completely different mm-hmm. direction with it, and it was so great. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. The, the, the director, from, from everything that I hear, he knew exactly what it was to make a good Star Wars film. Like, he is the biggest, like, super fan of them it, all, which is super, super helpful, right? But he also kind of took a big dump on everything that George Lucas did in the prequels and everything else, and it was okay. It was, made it good. Uh, who's the director? Is it a new director? Yeah, so new it's, it's a new director, and he's actually, now that this movie has done so well, uh, he's also being, um, he's also starting to pen a new trilogy after this that has nothing to do with the Skywalkers at all. Which is going to be super exciting. Nice. Wow. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go through through that in yeah. a second. But um, yeah, that was that was incredible. Um, the the overarching theme of parentage and comparing the the old ways of the Jedi with like, well, should we even go with that? You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of back and forth about following the old ways and whether or not it's good or bad. Mm. Okay. Um, old ways as in the old the... ways of the Jedi. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um and because it's a new generation and because, you know, literally the the title of the last Jedi is a reference to Luke Skywalker and Right. Um yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to see it. I, I, I don't usually – now, here's where people get weird with me, but I don't usually get, like, excited about a Star Wars movie. Mm. But I'm like, oh, cool. You know, it's, I'll see that. It's <laughs> such a it, – it's so different than the last decade or so of Star Wars movies. It's much more character driven instead of like big thematically driven, which is and super good. Yeah, that's I, I appreciate that so much more. It is it's a much smaller story <clears throat> even though it has some big implications on what's going on in the story. I highly recommend it. I know it's not for everybody because it's obviously not doing well uh critically for uh the audience. It's, I think it's like 95% for critics. Like seventy percent for like actual fans. I have had mm-hmm. old friends, Facebook acquaintances, and a random dude in a bar all say how much they did not enjoy the film. Yeah, it's wow, really? It's yeah, okay. It's convoluted. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot going on. It's very symbolic. There's a lot of symbolism that goes along with it. It's very intellectual. A majority of people are not going to like this. Yeah, they want. I think that. It's kind of like Empire Strikes Back in that same way, okay. that in a decade, in two decades, this is going to be viewed as one of the best Star Wars movies of all time, but it's going to take that time to get to that point. And they, th- those, those people that don't like it would just want those Muppets and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, those Muppets, man. <laughs> you know. <Right. laughs> well, and that's the thing. If, if you're expecting just a redo of Star Wars, there's already... 700 of those <laughs> right george lucas ma- remade the same film several times and kept adding stuff in that was not necessary right and so so the porgs cutest fuckers on the planet oh, yeah. oh, oh my gosh i love amazing i was gonna make a post on facebook and actually i'm gonna do that right now it's going to say the porgs sound like my korg as in my corgi because they do they sound a lot alike oh my gosh Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, great. Um, and that was actually um, that intro to the younger Borg um, was my favorite bit of dialogue. Yeah. Absolutely. In the film. That was amazing. I loved I loved the Chewbacca Porg scene outside of the Falcon. <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that's the only kind of non-spoiler. But anyways, so Star Wars. Yes. Yes. Go see oh, yeah. it. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it. Anything, Enjoy it. Anything else you watched this week? New stuff? No. No? No, I didn't watch anything. Yeah, I'll talk about it next week. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was a long segment, but yeah. Star Wars is important. Yeah, so. it's, it's very important. Well, we did an entire episode about it when The Force Awakens came out. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Yeah, we did a whole whole episode. With, um, uh, with Schmarl Knifer. So let's keep things moving here. Uh <laughs> So we're we're all theater kids, right? Yes, we all love no. theater. One and with the the release of the the Christmas Story on television, br- the br- Broadway yeah, on Christmas television, Story live, mm-hmm. live on the television on NBC. Was it on? I don't know. I, I, have, a, a, I have a DVR. I haven't looked at it yet. What do you feel from Christmas shows in general? What is missing from holiday shows that can make them even better? <sighs> How to make holiday stage shows better. Joel, you've got an answer. I don't really. um... (laughs) Okay, listen. For for people who regularly attend live theater, and uh, as in musicals specifically, we all know that you have to uh, suspend that disbelief where people can break into song. Yep. And sometimes songs do not advance the plot, Mm -hmm. especially when it's a show written around music, like jukebox jukebox musicals are these days. And with Christmas music, it's even harder. So I think there's a lot of shows without a solid plot um, that are more like reviews and people try to pull them off as actual shows start to finish. And it. Yeah. I, so I, 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 I like the shows that have a good plot, like White Christmas has a plot, um, A Christmas Story has a plot, stuff like that. Um, you need a plot. You yeah, need a plot. I agree. That's the kind of yeah. where I'm at is a lot of the times these shows 
lack plot altogether or just like a significant plot it's always right. just super fluffy and just kind of boring and not interesting right so don't get me wrong because i do appreciate a good review i i do enjoy review shows as do i um but when i'm going to see a big show and i want to you know have a wholesome story it's got to be good enough yeah, to enjoy. Kinda, it can't yeah, just be. Right. It can't be okay. How do we get from Jingle Bells to Rudolph to? And they just like throw in a bunch of stuff in between. Doesn't work for me. So let's let's talk about the best one that we've seen that are local theaters. What's the best like review show that has had a story that's not cinematic Christmas? <sighs> the best review show that has a story. So okay, yes. That you've seen. Have you seen any that we can fucking so, pass it? If... Yeah, let's let's backtrack here. Uh... Yeah, so uh yeah, no, I agree. I think I think yeah. <laughs> Michael. Wow, really Michael. good. Um yes, I am also a huge fan of a good review show. I think that if there is even the slightest bit of story in those, it it just gets you from from one song to the next. You yeah. know, that's that's all that it's there for. I had an idea when we did Cinemagic Christmas, but I wasn't one of the writers. Um, my my idea, and it could get like really freaky. This could be a an incredibly scary Christmas review show, uh, <laughs> where where a little girl, a little boy, is has got the flu um, right around Christmas time, and so they're sick in bed watching classic TV specials. And then they have this really intense fever dream mm-hmm. that kind of intermixes all of them. That would be fun. It's I basically it the be... Princess Bride set to Christmas. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah but but yeah. with the with the dream element. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, yeah, it only needs the slightest bit of story, and and I think that you shouldn't apologize for singing actual Christmas songs. Now, are, if we're talking about things like Christmas Story the musical, or Elf, the musical, uh, things like that, they need those, to actually have good music to right. Also, pull that off. also those shows tend to not pull the best parts of the movies that they're coming from. Yeah, I was and... just going to say it's 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 bizarre because a lot of movie uh, musicals that have that have come from movies like Elf and A Christmas Story, right? They'll come up with music that's like. They really didn't need that song. No, like I've, I, I'll say that about two or three songs, if not more, right per show like that. Yeah, no, it's like like that show. They're they're they pull they pull scenes, right? They pull specific scenes. They don't pull what it meant. Like mm-hmm. they'll they'll pull or, line for line what's going uh, on, but it won't have the same impact because it's not the same. I was just yeah. gonna say, not even a scene. You can take a line and turn it into a song. Or you could be Harry Connick Jr. and make a song and take and make it into an entire musical. No, we don't need to go. There. Yeah, yeah. Well, so <laughs> other example, it's a Wonderful Life, the musical. So <sighs> Candlelight did that last year. Mm-hmm. Um, performed admirably. I think that everyone who performed in it did an amazing job. I mm-hmm. agree. The script is just, just awful, horrible, awful, awful script. And like you said, it was almost line for line the original movie. Yeah. With some songs added, but again, the songs feel forced. There's no real reason to have yeah. any of them in there, especially with that particular story. Because I found myself, as usual, crying at the end of it, and I was like, I don't want to though, because it was so badly perf- like yeah, so I'm produced. With you. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. So on that same point, is the purpose of these shows not to be so? deep and intricate and they're supposed to be more broad to fit a more broad audience and people feel more comfortable to go see christmas shows and make more money that way yes and i will um elaborate on my answer because i think if you want to reach a broader audience and this is unfortunate but nobody talks about the story of christmas like the like you know the birth of christ and this like Elf never talks about it. The movie, Mm -mm. A Christmas Story, doesn't talk about it. Christmas Vacation never talks about it. Any of these big, big movies, they never talk about the story of Christmas. Really, Christmas Vacation makes fun of it. There you go. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like, um, it's like uh, it's like doing Joseph. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's barely even 
a biblical story. A biblical yeah. story yeah. at that point, and it's just about lights His and sound. Fancy sounds. sweater, right. Joseph and the fancy sweater, and that's a small short story. Oh my gosh, we should do a Christmas version of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing Technicolor Christmas sweater vest. Christmas sweater vest. Sweater vest. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> and it's got red and green and white and red and green Just and white. Stop, and stop that's before you embarrass co- yourself. <laughs> that's the only colors on the sweater because it's Christmas time. <laughs> that's the song. Anyway, but I I generally enjoy anything that has to do with Christmas. Uh, if I'm seeing a live performance. Um, that's a loose that's a loose statement. I enjoy anything. But I love Christmas so much that Yeah. Like the Rockettes show was a review and but it was so cool. It was I mean, it didn't need a plot. It was of course that's this is the Rockettes, but yeah. you know what I mean. All so, right. Or two years ago, uh, Bill Murray's Netflix. That was special. Great. It was so good. We didn't talk about this before, but I didn't like it. I liked it because it was so dumb. Uh, they, uh, uh, Michael Bolton did a Valentine's Day one, too. I need to by, see that this it's year. It's great. It's great, too. So I hope they, they do, like, I was talking about this on Facebook. I was like, they should continue this, like, tradition of doing, like, holiday music specials. They need to do a Metallica's 4th of July as their next one. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That'd be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, uh, let's yeah. let's move on, Michael. Yeah. I think you have a six degrees for us. You know what? I sure do, Charles. Oh, wow. Thanks for bringing that up. Wow. <laughs> so uh, you want to start uh, going over them? Yes, I will. I will indeed. So I was trying to keep it still in the in the Christmas movie theme, okay, type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was thinking of one of my favorites and mm-hmm. came across Tim Allen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And um, I would like you to connect Tim Allen with Jeffrey Tambor, who was okay. Mr. Mayhew All right. in The Grinch. <laughs> Tim yes, Allen was. to Jeffrey Tambor. Okay. So, right. so right. home home improvement to Arrested Development. Pretty much. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go over the rules real quick here, y'all. In case you're just now joining our podcast and you don't know how we play this game, we do it where you have to know the name of the actor, you have to know the name of the movie. You may use TV shows as well. They can't be large ensemble casts, however, such as Saturday Night Live. You also use an extra step if you go from guest star to guest star. Um, We are going to put... What do you think? Four minutes or five minutes? Let's do five. Let's do five. Five minutes on the clock, and we are going to take a quick step away here and get a word from our sponsor or whoever. I got it. You got, got it. it. Oh, oh, all right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, okay, okay. Last moment. All right. Okay. Lay it on me. <clears throat> Tim Allen. Home improvement. That's one degree. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yes. The Lion King. Oh shit! Yeah, he was he was young Simba. The Lion That's King. True. With Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. mm-hmm. who was in a, a very special Muppet Christmas uh-huh. with Frank Oz. Okay. Was that a was, movie or a TV it was, thing? It was a movie. Oh, okay. Who was in? Muppets from Space with Jeffrey Tambor. Oh, well, nicely fun. done. That was good. Joel is on point. That was good. That was like way to hold out for the last second there, man. Last second. L- like literally there were two seconds left on the clock. <laughs> I, uh, I I knew that Muppet. I was going to pull that Muppet thing out of my rear end. So, uh, Michael, what did you have? Oh, I, um, <clears throat> several different things like on websites and stuff. It, I didn't, I didn't have any specific, specific. trail myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, Michael. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what's my, uh, what's my punishment? Uh, do we have, I don't have anything picked out. I don't give a fuck. Um, why don't, do, <sighs> how about you watch? The room. <laughs> Shut up. How about I just actually watch Spinal Tap because I still haven't? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. 
All right, dude. Uh, yeah, watch Spinal Tap. All it's right. happening. And if you don't, it's happening. What what happens if Michael doesn't? He gets spinal tapped. Mm-hmm. That was dumb. Mine was better. What did you say? I said it's happening. She got it. You're not allowed, Maya. <laughs> you're not allowed to laugh at Michael. His jokes are dumb. And you should be ashamed <laughs> at this whole situation. Okay, All let's, right. let's go going on. Back. To, let's, so, go, let's go to the next thing. Uh, sorry, not going back. Moving forward. Moving forward. Hey. <laughs> Moving forward. Uh, how do you guys feel about the, the Disney-Fox merger? What are your thoughts about everything that you've heard so far about what's going on there? Do you know what's going on? I haven't heard I much. I know that Disney bought 20th Century Fox. Yep, that's the whole that's... thing. So it's great because they have access to all the like Deadpool, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four was Fox. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Yes, it was. So those Marvel characters, they also get the the uh, 20th Century Fox fanfare in front of the Star Wars movies again. Um, that's for you. It's a problem here too. Yep, it's a problem everywhere. Um, but now Disney owns 40 percent of all movies, 40 percent of all television. That's huge. That's scary. That's a huge amount of it, everything. It is weird for someone to have a monopoly on on entertainment. On entertainment. entertainment. I think it's stupid. Yeah, it's not. It's not a good. It's not a good situation. <laughs> I, I just don't think it's necessary. Why do they need to? I mean, I know they're a business and they're trying to make money, but why do they need to have so much? It's because it's consumerism. It's just. It's, I mean, it's, it's just it's, like. It's, all, all that you can do at this point is just grow and grow and grow. And at this point, I just businesses think, have to be eaten up to I know, grow. I, and I get it. I just think it's obnoxious. It's like, look at us. We're Disney. Look, we bought Fox now. Yep. <laughs> look, guess what because we're going to buy next? We can. <laughs> it's like, Disney, knock it off, dude. Like, Disney not, himself uh, is dead. I mean, I don't know. It's just, I, I just think it's annoying. <laughs> It's not. It's, it's like a, we get it. You have money and you want to make money. Can you just maybe like make good movies? Yeah, that's your business. Especially Disney's habit to a not make as many unique new movies and not use new IPs except yeah. for their except for their like animated films. Uh, that's a huge issue right there. You know, I was I was very upset when they bought Pixar, <clears throat> like early on, mm-hmm. and. Because Pixar was its own great thing. It was. Yeah. And that's where I come from with my getting yeah. annoyed. It's like, let them have their co- business. But, and they still do. But, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and then the next, beginning of Coco, the right. whole Frozen shtick, I was right. like, well, that is crossing a line, yep. Disney. Yeah. You, and this next you year. You let Pixar do their own thing. This next year, they're releasing Planes 4. Uh, which, again, it's is, not a, thing. Is not, it's not a Pixar thing. Uh-huh. But, yes. <laughs> it's it's not real either. Okay. I, I I just it's like what what's next? What's next? You know, like what are they gonna buy next? I mean, it, Star Wars. And I, I just yeah. like when that happened, I was like, what? So MGM instead of a lion is going to be a mouse. Oh good. <laughs> oh god. Well, I mean, if if they bought. MGM. That mean we'd actually get more Stargate, hopefully. But there you go. Yeah, I mean the the possibilities for crossovers is the one thing that I do appreciate about that purchase. Yeah. I mean the the Marvel the Marvel Cinematic Universe stuff. However, the fact that Deadpool makes fun of the fact that they're low budget, I think, is incredibly endearing. And so, hopefully, that doesn't change. All right. We will see. Mm-hmm. It makes me think of um, Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm-hmm. You know, I I doubt they could have done the whole "we're going to build a Lego Death Star together" bit if Disney hadn't purchased Lucasfilm. <laughs> no, I'm, but I mean, like, cool. Yeah, we get we get a, Avengers Seven with like Wolverine, the third Wolverine that they'll be cast. Awesome, great. But what else is there good about that? That's it. That's it. We're not going. There's not going to be as much innovation because these companies are monopolies and they don't have no reason financially to. They don't have no reason. (laughs) They ain't got no purpose. They ain't ain't got. They ain't got no reason, girl. I I think that uh, the way that they're going to use, you know, like 
I hate to use the term monopolize, but you know, hey, um, the way that's happening is they're looking at making money, and it's going to be more about making money and less about putting out good content. Yeah. yeah, just like they're doing with recording artists these days. They get a girl like Rebecca Black, and they put out a crappy video and song, and it explodes. And do we want movies like that? Yeah. I mean, they, no. they, they exist, but do well, we? And no, but maybe that we want will. want 40% of movies like Exactly. That. Yeah. Maybe that will open the door for more independent projects and, and people to actually be expressive and artistic mm. on a lower budget. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe that will draw people more towards those pieces. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. Yeah. I hope. It's far fetched. Something I random know. media. Uh, I see. Plug. Yeah, I really, I, I think, but I see media <laughs> pulling outside of like, with people taking in most of their media online and taking stuff off of YouTube and stuff like that. I think it's going to be more individual creators that are going to be creating unique arts. These big companies are not going to do that. We're going to see a big decrease in people going to the theaters because they're going to get superhero fatigue. They're going to get Star Wars fatigue in a couple years. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's depressing. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. There's nothing we can do about it. So let's just... Or can we? Yes. Let's, let's, let's do what we can. Do what we do best. Create a new movie. Here's my pitch for you guys. Let's do the worst Disney Fox crossover movie. It'd be the Avengers of all the cinematic universes that we okay. have. Okay. Okay. So now keep in keep in mind that since they own 20th Century Fox, they also own <clears throat> Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They also own like all the FX shows. They own Ooh. all these different aspects. Off the top of my head, Avengers: Kingdom of Hearts. <laughs> Except, I mean, what? <laughs> y yes, but I mean, Disney was already part of Kingdom Hearts. Oh, that's true. That's no, I I forgot to include Fox in that. Never mind. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, but they, they I saw I saw a post where Fantastic they did, Four Kingdom of Hearts. <laughs> I saw, I saw a post um, where they did Hank Hill as Sora from Kingdom Hearts oh, because of the crossover. It. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> damn it, Donald! Damn it, Goofy! I would like to cross oh, over. Oh. I, I'd have a American Horror Story Muppets. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> Uh, there was a. You're year. welcome. Yeah. Okay. This is great, and I. <laughs> this am, is the direction we are this, going. This is one hundred percent the direction that we are going. There's a YouTube channel. I forget what it's called, and it's like Muppets, and it's like Sesame Street, and it starts off like cute and funsy, and they're like ten minute videos, right? So they slowly get weirder and weirder and weirder until they're ripping out like human hearts from the Muppets and like they're chopping them up. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. It's um, the elsigating thing that we No, were, no. This is completely different. Oh. This is like I, I think it's that is it that don't hug me I'm scared thing? Don't hug me yes, yes. is what it's called. Yes, yes. Um and it's all it's it's like five or six different videos and they put over time and it's meant to be creepy. It's not like Elsigate where it's trying to get kids into it. There is like an M rating on these. It's it's creepy as heck i think this is the direction that we're going do we use actual muppets you should look that up of course yeah disney owns the muppets right right yep they do. of course i'm talking I, I don't mean like muppet character muppet like new muppet characters i mean like kermit and piggy and fozzy and gonzo mm -hmm. in american horror story with sarah paulson yes and i think iron man would make an appearance oh yeah and deadpool and uh batman and uh who Wait, else? does Disney own DC? I too? don't know, but well, let's throw them in there. Come yeah, on. they're gonna own everything in a in a few. Uh, Audrey few Two months. from Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, let's just throw them in there. Come on, American Little Shop of Horrors story. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what else can we put in there? Okay, let's 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 think of Disney Lost. We can get like Jack and Kate from Lost because that's a Disney show. How about the the Cowardly Lion and Dorothy? And uh, the Wizard of yeah, Oz yeah. characters. So awesome. you got those. Yeah, yeah. You can, Bring it in there. Right? Uh, you know what you could do also? Bad Santa. You know, <laughs> you get Billy Bob Thornton in there. That is a Disney movie. <laughs> That's great. I that was a that. Disney movie All before right. the Fox merger. That was a so, Disney Disney movie. So we have a, we have a lot of characters. <laughs> Um, we have no plots, we like have no most, plot. most Disney movies. Uh, you throw uh, them in a room and see what they do. Yeah. That's the story. You, you build these characters. So it, it, oh, yeah. shit. Oh, it's like the real yes. world. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I like this. But with like a horror theme behind it. So it's kind of like Roanoke with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with yes, 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 yes. Yes. But it's actually like we're murdering these characters off because you can't own so much, right? So you have to kill off these actors. <laughs> Can we early on kill off Jack Sparrow? Oh yeah, I'm I'm fine with killing yep. up Johnny Depp. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Can I can I do a little bit of a rant? Of course. Uh, Fantastic Beasts. Why the <laughs> fuck is Colin Farrell still not Grindelwald? Why the fuck do they have to bring Johnny Depp into that bullshit? It's bullshit. Johnny Depp is playing Grindelwald. You didn't see the end of that movie. He like, it literally. They're, the like, credits, they're like. They're like. No. It's it's literally like the last scene. They like do like a swish and flick on Colin Farrell, and his face melts into Johnny Depp's face. It's bullshit. No, I missed that. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. I saw what? that and I was like, even Johnny Depp is everybody in this movie too? Fuck uh, this. And I'm not excited. So maybe it should just be just Johnny Depp in the room. <laughs> Johnny Depp playing everybody. <laughs> you know. I'm fine with that. Or he could do several, you know, all his characters. Okay, so here's, here's what we do. Johnny Depp is the only one who thinks this is real. Okay. And it's all these different characters, Muppets, you know, every other actor. And the goal is, how can we murder Johnny Depp? Let's just fucking kill the guy and film it. And everybody would be fine with it. (laughs) It takes a lot. It takes a lot to kill him. It does. He has um, a lot of. He has a lot of like like mystical. No, I don't want to <laughs> fucking do this joke. I'm so not okay with this bit. Why not? Mystical power, Johnny Depp. It's like Shia LaBeouf. I'm I'm fine with doing Shia LaBeouf. I'm not fine with saying this about well, Shia LaBeouf is is gonna be killing Johnny Depp. I'm fine with that. He's gonna be the one to eat him. Have I told you that I have like an idea for a full length version of that movie, like off that song? Oh no, but we will talk about that later. Yes. Uh, Okay, so so we we launch Gonzo at him. Okay, out of a cannon. Um, Great. Did you? Okay, so there was there was a comic pretty recently where it's um, it's Scooter sitting over Mup or sitting over Gonzo on like a deathbed or something like that. It's obvious that Gonzo's been hurt, right? <laughs> and Scooter's like, "Hey, one question before you go. Everybody's been asking this. What the fuck are you?" And Gonzo looks up at him and he's like, isn't it obvious? I'm an artist. And he dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I Got thought it was stuff. funny. Um, so how would American Horror Story play into this? Ryan Murphy writes the whole thing. Okay. And there's twists and twisties in it. Mm-hmm. So it's a show within a show where Ryan Murphy is the, the writer of this reality show. That's all. Okay. okay. That's I think all getting, a big I think plot we're, to kill Johnny Depp. I, I this is getting a little, a little, wacky, crazy. I think we need to rein it in a little bit. All right. I think we should stick with the American Horror Story with like a, a theme of like Disney, but with a theme <laughs> of reality. It's not real, but it is the theme of reality. So you have the Muppets being brutally murdered in this this thing. You have other Disney characters. You can have Elsa and Spider-Man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Yeah, I think we need to leave the rest up to the imagination of our yeah. listeners. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think I think we we've got this, guys. I think I think we're good. And we can call it I think Disney uh, Infinity War. No. I think we call it American Disney Story? No. No, it's got to be American Horror Story. Fuck all Disney. Merge. How about American Horror Story merge? Ooh. American Horror Story, Disney buys fuck all. <clears throat> American Horror Story. It could just be American Horror Story, Disney. American Horror Story, <laughs> Disney everything. Disney. Yeah, Diz. Diz. Yep. Di- no, that's it. Disney. With a Z. Diz. <laughs> Diz. Dizzy knee. No. Disney and that knee. And... Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, well, this was fun, I guess. I'm depressed now. <laughs> now guys. we're all bummed out. Yeah. Because of the merger. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. We'll create cool shit, anyways. Yeah. Well, anyways, now we have to do this like super, super depressed. We have to. We have to go out on this show. I'm excited about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. The bit is, I'm depressed. Michael's depressed. Joel, you are like fucking stoked. All right. <laughs> I need like two seconds. Absolute silence. 
thanks so much for listening to the podcast everybody um thank you thank you for checking out the show you can follow us on on twitter you can follow us on snapchat i don't we don't have a Pretty fucking much snapchat anywhere they have podcasts and yeah anywhere we have our podcasts um as always i'm your depressed host charles joseph kelly and i'm uh, michael c Macbeth signing off um have have a merry christmas or don't whatever i don't give a fuck anymore i'm excited about this <laughs> That's cool. I'm I'm really glad that you're okay. happy, Joel. <laughs> I think we brought him you down. can follow me on Snapchat. I'll be I'll be, I'll be on there. Yeah, you're on Snapchat. I'm on <laughs> I'm on Snapchat. My Snapchat name is Corgi Buns. So this is Joel. This is Joel Adam Chavis. This is this is uh, the guy, the excited guy. He's mm-hmm. ready for this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, thank you so much for listening, guys. And have yourselves a wonderful week. Oh, I thought you were going to say have yourselves a Merry Christmas. Have yourselves a Merry Christmas. <laughs> have yourselves whatever the fuck you want. Have it. Just have have it. Just just make sure. Just take it in your hands and just... Just, just have it. Yeah, just but, have but it. Let mm-hmm. your heart be light. Okay, okay. okay. Let's let's Michael <laughs> Michael spitting some <laughs> spitting some fire here. This sounds like like a new poem that you're going to write. Give it to me. <laughs> Well, no, I got nothing. <laughs> I mean, you could have just listed off the rest of the lyrics of the song, but you know who the fuck cares? Bye. See you guys. <laughs> oh, I'm waving. You can't hear it. I'm waving.